Hello, BookTube. I did a mail haul yesterday. You didn't see it. I filmed it, but I didn't upload it. Uh, because it was long. It was big. It was like 11 or 12 books, but it was blah. It was just blah. None of the books irritated me. None of the books especially interested me. None of the books pleased me. Uh, it was just me opening mail. <laughs> which is, You might think that happens all the time here, but there's always something else. There's a charge, an electric charge waiting to go off one way or another. Uh, and it didn't happen in that video. And I thought, well, at first I thought, all the anal retentive things you think. I thought, well, you should upload it anyway. Surely somebody will find some of the books in here interesting. And I thought, no, if it doesn't interest me, it's not going to interest anybody else. Uh, so I have, I have a smaller mail haul this time around. And I'm going to try. Again, we don't have to, I don't have to upload this, but I'm going to try and see if this is a little bit more engaging. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what we have here. This, one, this mail haul is much smaller than... Oh, oh my. Oh, oh. Oh, wonderful. All right, this comes out in the middle of next month. This is by Robert Thorson, and it is The Guide to Walden Pond. There it is. There's Walden Pond. A lot, many, many of you have no doubt read Thoreau, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to bet that a, a far smaller extent of you have been to Walden Pond, much less been more than once. I, I've tracked over every single inch of Walden Pond. Uh, and uh, not everybody has, unless you're near it. You probably haven't done that. It's a, but uh, this is. It looks like this is a nature guide to to Walden Pond, and also a history, a history guide. Oh, 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 oh man! <laughs> oh wow! Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is probably selling like hotcakes at Walden Pond. Uh, great. All right. Well, see, that's a better start than we had in the whole thing yesterday. Let's see what this next one is. What have we got here? Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, this is a big, fat debut novel that I, I absolutely love debut novels. I've mentioned that on this channel before. It's the, something about them. The authors can easily go on from there to annoy me or to bore me. Uh, but in their debut novel, it, the slate is clean, the snow is fresh fallen, and you just want to see what this new voice in your life can do. Here's a new voice that you are admitting into your imagination. What do they have to say? What can they do? I just love that. Absolutely love it. And this is a, it's a novel by Stephen Markley called Ohio. Big, thick uh, thing. Stephen Markley is an author, screenwriter, and journalist. A graduate of the Iowa Writers Workshop in Iowa City, Iowa, on the banks of the Iowa River. <laughs> uh, Markley's previous books... Okay, Markley's previous books did not graduate from the Iowa Writers' Workshop, but that's okay. Uh, Markley's previous books include the memoir, Publish This Book, uh, and the travelogue, Tales of Iceland. I don't remember either one of those books, and now I want to know about them. Uh, anyway, so this is, uh, on a feverish summer night in 2013, four former classmates converge on the Rust Belt town where they grew up, each of them with a mission, all of them haunted by regrets, secrets, and lost loves. Since the turn of the century, the gener a generation has come of age knowing only war, recession, political gridlock, racial hostility, and a simmering fear of environmental calamity. In the country's forgotten pockets, where industry long ago fled, where for foreclosures, Walmarts, and opiates uh, riddle the land, unemployment, suicide, and addiction breed marginalization, disillusionment, and rage. This is the world of characters of the characters in Stephen Markley's brilliant debut novel, Ohio. This is New Canaan. There's Bill Ashcraft, an alcoholic, drug-abusing activist whose fruitless ambitions have taken him from Cambodia to Zuccotti Park to New Orleans, now back in the cane with a mysterious package strapped to the underside of his truck. Stacy Moore, a doctoral candidate reluctantly confronting the mother of her former lover, Dan Eaton, a shy veteran of three tours in Iraq, home for dinner date for a dinner date, the high school sweetheart he's tried to forget, and the beautiful, fragile Tina Ross, whose relationship with former football star triggers the novel's shocking climax. Uh, and this comes out in August, and uh, I can't wait. I just can't wait to to see what this author has to do. This is a big, ambitious thing, and I know the work that goes into something like this. So. Uh, all right, we're two for two. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right, so let's move on. Let's see what we can do next here. Only four packages. So we've... Uh, 
Okay, all right. Oh, okay, great. All right. Um, uh, the public has got in touch with me about this. Uh, uh, and it seemed fascinating. I, it's always it's always a little alarming when a publicist gets your number and just knows exactly what to pitch to you. And this definitely worked for me. This is by Zhu Howie. Howie? Zhu Howie? It is Death Notice. And apparently it's it's a big hit in China. It's a thriller. It's a big hit in China. Look at the way they've used the uh, the calligraphy to write a novel. Isn't that neat? <laughs> uh, this was out from Doubleday in the summer, I believe. Uh, yeah, in June. Uh, and it's yeah a deadly game of cat and mouse from China's most popular thriller writer. Do we have a, a biography for... It's translated from the Chinese by Zach Halusa. Do we have a biography of... Uh, yes, we do. Uh, Zhu Hui is regarded as one of the top three suspense authors in China today. I immediately want to know who the other two are. <laughs> Did not know China had three top thriller writers. Uh, Death, the Death Notice Trilogy is China's best-selling and most popular work of suspense fiction to date. The online series based on these novels has received more than 2.4 billion views and achieved almost legendary status among Chinese online dramas. I wonder if that's available on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, where this channel, I might point out, and <laughs> it feels a little silly to do so, uh, recently topped 1 million views. And my my young people, my my uh, muscular teenagers, and my sherpet are separately to get, telling me that it's a big deal, and I don't I don't see that. I don't see that it's a big deal. They keep saying that it is, but I think they think that I monetize my channel. I I don't see. I mean, it's a big number. It's a great big number. That's a lot of fun. It's always it was fun to watch the speedometer roll over to one million. But I don't think it really matters unless you're monetizing your channel. I, I don't know, I, uh, but anyway, it's not 2.4 billion. <laughs> uh, so what have we got here? Uh, the modern city of Chengdu, a vibrant capital of China's stunning Sichuan province, is rocked by a shocking manifesto released by an anonymous entity known as Eumenides after the Greek deities of vengeance and retribution. Is the manifesto a sick joke or something more sinister? Soon, the public starts nominating worthy targets for Eumenides to kill. The Furies. They're calling down the Furies on people. Humanity's cunning game has only just begun. The police receive a death notice, a chilling note announcing the killer's next target, the crimes he has committed, and the date of his execution. Halfway through the description, I'm already completely on board. Uh, the note is both a public challenge and a deeply personal taunt directed at the police. More death notices are coming, and the authorities are powerless to prevent them from being fulfilled. An elite task force of the city's most dedicated cops is formed to find the faceless killer before he kills again and unleashes chaos. The hunt for Eumenides is on. Death Notice is an exhilarating cinematic crime novel that heralds Zhu Huawei's English language arrival as a major thriller writer. A must read for all aficionados of the genre and fans of Yo Nesbo and Hong Kong police cinema. Uh, okay. Wow, I wonder, I wonder what this is like for this author. I mean, this is a major publishing house. This is obviously a major rollout for the summer. Uh, but I confess, I don't know anything about what this author's life would be like. Does he make a profit from his writing? Is he allowed to? What about the profits that he gets from his overseas sales, specifically from opening up an American market for his novels? Does he get a profit from that? Would he tour? This novel? Anywhere? Even in the Pacific? Much less in America? I, I honestly don't know. Uh, and I'm, 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 if I remember correctly from internet stuff that I've read, isn't it true that uh, China does not see this channel? That no one in China sees this channel? That uh, YouTube is not allowed? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I need to research. I shouldn't be so ignorant of, of those things. But either way, this is going to be fascinating. Uh, one of the first things I will do, of course, I, I want to know who the other two popular thriller writers are, and I want to know, I want to watch some of the episodes if they're available on YouTube. Uh, but another thing I want to know is what Zach Halusa has translated before, because a major thing now with this is going to be, you know, I, I in in a novel you want to be in a room with the author, and the author will be telling you a story. There's no one else in the room, and when you have translated work, 
you're in the room with the author, and the author's telling you a story, but there's somebody fussing around, <laughs> refilling the candy jars, pottering around at the door, fixing the window covers, and then it can be annoying. Unless they do it right, it can be annoying, and that's what's going to happen. This Zach is going to be in the room with me and the author, so I'd, I'd be curious to know how much other translating he's done and whether or not he's going to get in the way, because uh, I don't think I'm ever going to read this in the original. Uh, Wow, fascinating. Okay, all right, and then we'll do one last one, uh, and then we'll be done for today. What is this last one? Oh, okay, all right, wonderful. Uh, okay, this is from Pyre, and this is by John Sprunk, and it is Blade and Bone. Uh, it's the third book in a series of The Black Earth, and uh, I've read the other two books, but I don't know that I still have them. Uh, in a world of sorcery and sand, a slave rebellion is out of control and an army of undead is approaching. Does Horus have the power and strength to save what he fought so hard to win? And this is a sequel to Blood and Iron and Storm and Steel. Uh, and this is fantastic. Am I only wary? I think this comes out in the summer as well. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe it's not already. Uh, what do we got here? My only worry about this is that I am... Yeah, it's out already, or it's due in, in any day now. Uh, my only worry is that I'm not going to remember enough of the first two books uh, to really feel like the... Mem I, m I remember the characters, and I remember what happens. I remember the climax of both two books. But I don't know if I'm, if I'm in the zone enough to flow straight into this book. Uh, so I might have to reread at least the second book to get the old scent back. Okay, well, that that was a much more engaging mail haul, even as small as it was, than the huge one that I filmed yesterday. So let's, uh, we've got uh, Blade and Bone, science fiction fantasy, wonderful stuff. Uh, Death Notice, a thriller from China. How fascinating. Uh, Ohio, a big, ambitious debut novel due in the summer. Uh, and A Guide to Walden Pond, which is just that. It is just the nature, the history, the walks, the vegetation, all of it for for Walden Pond, an unlikely psychological landmark in, in American literary history. Uh, so that there you go. That's wonderful. I will, uh, I will sign off for now and dig around in these and see what I can make of them. Uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.